Great. Well, I think we're going to get started. Um, welcome to the third official EarthCube Community um, Monthly Update. This monthly webinar is going to feature um, Karen and Mike from Phase 2, and they'll be giving a demonstration and introduction to OpenAtrium 2. Uh, this will be followed by a short demonstration of the EarthCube workspace that works in this um, in OpenAtrium 2, and this will be given by Kate Kretschmann at the EarthCube Test Enterprise Governance Team. And uh, that will be followed by a short Q&A. So if at any time during this webinar you guys have questions, feel free to place them into the chat window. Um, I'll be monitoring the chat and either answer questions in the chat or we'll address them uh, later at the end of the webinar by our webmaster Pam or by um, Karen or Mike or Kate. So to get started, we're going to um, pass presenter rights to, to Karen and um, she's going to get started with Mike on their demonstration. Karen, um, Kate, did you want to pass over sharing right? I apologize. Um, let's see. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Thanks, Karen. And if, it would be wonderful if you could also, because I don't think I can give you the, the introduction as well as you can, um, tell us a little bit about you and Mike and what you're doing over at Facebook. Wonderful. Sure, absolutely. I can do that. Um, can can people hear me okay? Yeah, we hear you great. Great. Okay. Um, so, uh, like I said, I'm Karen Borcher, and I'm the VP for Strategic Initiatives at Phase Two. And uh, with me is Mike Potter, who is our Open Atrium Lead Architect. And we are. Uh, there we go. Sorry, uh, we are. We have both been a part of the Open Atrium build team um, for about the past year and a half, um, and Mike Potter has has really been um, the lead technical architect and has really built the majority of the product. I've been um, at work on the side of of the business and use cases for for Open Atrium and how it will be used in the rest of the world. So first of all, uh, we are really excited to see the the, the portal that you've built um, and what you're doing uh, with Open Atrium. Very excited to see uh, to see you know real live sites being um, being built both by our teams and then by by teams outside of our uh, of phase two. Um, so we're really excited for what you're doing and, and just want to thank you for for uh, giving Open Atrium a shot and 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 putting it to use in your organization. Um, so I I'm not going to um, go into depth into the product because most of you know it uh, <laughs> that 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 have been um, working on this and I think it'll be more exciting to see your use of Open Atrium. Uh, but I will go through. A quick overview of what Open Atrium is and what it's all about, and and what is, what its building blocks are, so that um, then when you're looking at at the at the your portal site, then we can um, you'll have some context. So, what is Open Atrium? Um, Open Atrium is open source collaboration software used to build intranets, portals, and collaboration platforms for organizations. Um, it has a number of features that help it uh, that help it achieve you know collaboration goals for different organizations. So everything from being able to manage documents and events and calendars, um, discussions and uh, multimedia, um, to being optimized for mobile, um, ready to to track uh, projects and milestones and deliverables. Um, and then and then there's a, a number of features that are sort of inherent to it. So so you'll see and, and as we go along, you'll notice that data security is incredibly important. So protecting uh, the the access control to information to specific groups of of people, specific roles or specific uh, individuals who need information. And keeping it um, and keeping it out of out of uh, the public domain when it's not when it shouldn't be. Uh, identity management, activity streams and workflow, uh, notifications, tags and taxonomies, 
learning tools, social tools, um, microsites, and the ability to create some, you know, kind of a, a, a microsite platform, um, a, a custom dashboard that allows people to see what they'd like to see when they log in, and a custom look and feel, um, as well as the tutorials and tours that help you learn how to use Atrium. So, um, you know, really what we've focused on is building, as, a, as an organization, is building an open source collaboration tool that would be extremely flexible and, and give uh, people the, the ability to use Open Atrium for um, all kinds of different collaboration uses, be it an intranet or uh, more of a, a portal like, like you all built, um, and, and to be able to do that in a, in a very extensible, very uh, modular and open source way. So, um, as you'll see, you know, that's really been our focus from day one. Um, we like to, you know, Mike is fond of saying, um, we are proudly invented elsewhere. Many of the modules of Open Atrium are contributed modules to the Drupal project and are, and are some of the best in class modules and, and pieces of, of uh, code in the Drupal community. Uh, so we are really proud to be working, uh, you know, on the shoulders of giants in terms of the, the modules that are, that are part of this. Um, project and excited to be able to bring it all together in this way. Um, so, how do you use it? Uh, open Atrium is an open source distribution of Drupal code, as, as you probably know, and it's free to download to anyone. Uh, installing the code d definitely requires some technical knowledge and an understanding of Drupal, uh, but less technical teams can try out Open Atrium in a hosted environment um, like Pantheon um, or, or through your organization if they have instances set up. Um, a developer can, team can also help you use or customize it. And um, if you're curious or interested in what, in what phase two does for a living besides uh, building great open source products like this, um, our, our development team is, uh, we, we do most of the work and business that we do as a company uh, by developing custom in instances of the software that we build and, and custom Drupal um, platforms and sites, uh, as well as as sites and software outside of outside of Drupal as well. Um, so, how it's used, Open Atrium is a, is uh, can be used, like I said, in a variety of different ways. And we'll look at a couple of of sort of uh, set up test cases or use cases that that will allow us to to see how it can how those features can be combined. Um, so, an extensible internet is probably one of the the key ones. Um, the idea of creating uh, documents that are shared among, among staff and, and in different levels of permission, um, events and calendars for an organization or for departments, uh, discussions that will allow allow employees or, or members to talk to one another and, and really communicate uh, uh, in real time. Multimedia and the ability to share those, those assets, mobile access uh, and the ability to reach your internet and the information that you need from any device. And like I said, data privacy as, as a really key, uh, key feature of any of these use cases is the ability to, to be um, very granular with your level of access control at, 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 it, at any place in the site. Um, a social collaboration platform, um, I, these are you know, the ability to connect with uh, citizens, members, constituents, et cetera, uh, in, a, in a public facing way. Um, like a citizen connect kind of platform, um, and that's not terribly different than um, some of what uh, of what your portal is is doing. And so you'll you'll see a lot of commonalities here um, in the way discussions, uh, custom dashboards, and multimedia are handled, as well as events and activity streams and social tools. Um, a knowledge management system. Uh, we actually use Open Atrium to power the Open Atrium documentation site. Uh, so document management is uh, really key and, and having a, a really easy way to organize documentation for um, a knowledge management system is, is really useful. Um, multimedia obviously can be really helpful with the documentation. Um, mobile access, data privacy and identity management are, are, are key to any you know, use and, and adoption of, of knowledge management. Um, and then workflow and tags and taxonomy. And, and, and workflow is something that we're you know, actually actively working on now, and um, Mike can probably t speak more to that later on it, it, if there are some questions around workflow as well. Um, and then finally, a learning management system um, outside of the traditional uses of, of some collaboration softwares, uh, the idea of, of uh, online institutions or uh, educational institutions being able to offer 
uh, course calendars and course management and even recorded lectures and online learning um, through a single through a single portal like uh, Open Atrium can provide. So uh, we see a lot of a lot of applicability and a lot of opportunity in the higher ed and, and online learning space, both for educational institutions as well as um, corporations and organizations looking to provide education to their to their staff and constituents. Um, so those are kind of uh, four. Oops, and then for the fifth one is is an engaging web portal. Um, so this one, this one, I, I probably should have replaced the picture with your site today. Um, but the ability to start to create this, you know, workspace like you guys have a web portal that's public facing, but then has um, kind of workplaces inside that you can join and be a part of, um, is really an exciting part of of, of Open Atrium, and, and uh, we're actually really looking forward to to learning more about how you're using it this way. Um, so it, I thought it might be useful just to, uh, in, in terms of knowing you know, what, what it can do and how it can be used is great. Um, understanding a little bit about the building blocks um, of Open Atrium can be a really useful thing to, to understanding any, any site built in it. So I, I'm just going to go through some kind of basic building blocks that we use um, to, to talk through Open Atrium and then um, I'll, 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 after that I'll, I'll move it over to you guys to show you the site. Um, so, Open Atrium is, is built on, on four concepts, uh, people, structure, permissions, and content. And we are, uh, it's really important to understand the building blocks because it is such a flexible system and it is such a flexible framework that these things can, can be combined in really different ways um, in really successful ways. So, I'm just going to go through each one of them and, and, and let you understand kind of the parlance and, and what these building blocks, uh, how they work together. So the first one is people. Um, members of your of your Open Atrium site are, are a user with access to your site spaces. Um, a group is a collection of users uh, that may span a related purpose um, across multiple spaces. So sometimes groups are associated with a role. Um, sometimes groups are associated with um, a specific function in, in an organization. And then a team is an ad hoc collection of users specific to one space. So a team would be uh, perhaps a task force or um, a small group of people working on a specific project together, but they might be members of, of very different groups um, and very different spaces. Um, so that's people structure. Um, you know, we like to think about we like to think about the structure of Open Atrium as, as feeling a little bit like a, a file cabinet. So if you think about a file cabinet, uh, a space as a file cabinet, you know, you have one big space that is that is holding. Uh, content holding a collection of content. So you think about that as your file cabinet. And then a subspace is like a drawer of your file cabinet. So it's an additional division of that content within a space. Uh, that's a subspace. And then, um, and then a section is where your content actually lives on your site, like a file folder in the in a in the drawer of a filing cabinet. So if you kind of start to think about it, and you think about how you organize the content and information you need to get across, uh, you have spaces and then subspaces that are the drawers within that, and then the sections which are the folders there. Um, and then again, you know, I, I know I've spoken about this before, but permissions and data privacy is so key. Um, to any time you're, you're uh, collaborating online. Um, so you have the ability to make uh, your spaces and sections public or private or have kind of a mixed mode where there's a top level space that is public and, and private areas nested below. And then finally, um, the, content, the content that sort of ships with Open Atrium out of the box uh, includes documents. So we're creating documentation or wiki pages or articles. Um, and then events, uh, so you can you can uh, do events calendars with iCal integration and geolocation, uh, discussions that allow you to have forums and discussion posts and media attachments uh, to conversations, and then work tracker to monitor projects and milestones and deliverables. And so together, um, we'll just I'll just show you quickly how they might all work together in in a single in a single concept. Um, so, if you, we like to call this little case study, uh, you know, we have a, a company looking to build an internet. Um, so, they have these people. Um, they have members that are employees and groups like an HR department or executive um, and maybe a team working on a new policy for, for, uh, for HR. And then you have um, this collection of spaces and subspaces and sections 
um, that these different groups and teams have access to or don't have access to, depending on. Um, so you'll have a space overall um, for HR, and within that space, there are three subspaces, the employee resources space that's very open and public and has um, things like company policies and employee benefits and a, and a benefits discussion forum. Uh, and then you have a space that's sort of semi-private that is the HR workspace uh, that is specifically for the HR department. You might have a little bit of information that, that's available for anyone, uh, but they have then uh, private sections beneath it for things like drafting new company policies or uh, where the HR department might keep salary information that they want to keep um, very much locked off. And then uh, perhaps a subspace that's completely private uh, for employee contracts that would be uh, obviously privy only to a very a very small number of people. Um, so you can start to see how these things fit together and, and what we hope is that as people start to see examples of Open Atrium and its building blocks fitting together, uh, that you can also then then start to imagine what it might look like for a collaboration space for your for your own need. So getting involved in Open Atrium, um, you know, is as simple as I said as as downloading the, the software if you're interested in using it or jumping into your own site. Um, there's also Open Atrium uh, docs at, at docs.openatrium.com. Um, things like this building blocks diagram as well as information on getting started, uh, a tour that'll take you really through the whole site and provide, with a, provide you with a good overview of how to use all of these things. Um, is all is all there at, at, at docs.openatrium.com. Um, and then and then obviously, you know, Mike and I um, are are available through a number of channels, um, including the Open Atrium issue queue at Drupal.org um, and a, a number of, of communication channels like like Twitter and um, and email, of course. So um, that's that's sort of my my uh, quick overview of Open Atrium. I will I will pass it back to you guys, so or or ask you to pass it back uh, to in order to show the site. And we're really excited to see it. Uh, and and at the end, Mike will be available for some for some conversations as as well. Oh, great! Thank you so much, Karen. We are shifting our site back. Is it viewable? Mm -hmm. You can see it on yours? Oh, great. Okay, um, this is Kate Kretschmann. I'm a project coordinator at the Arizona Geological Survey, and I'm working under the Test Enterprise Governance Award for EarthCube. Um, because our award involves facilitation of many of the other projects, we were tasked with creating a new web platform. And what we needed was a very large scale knowledge hub for all of our funded projects and special interest groups, a space where they can collaborate on all of their project activities in a way that would be transparent and open to public review. And we wanted to go with an open source platform from the start. We ended up choosing Open Atrium partly because they, had a, a, they have a pretty good support network and partly because a lot of the capabilities that we really wanted were already built and we could just import them into the site as we made it. So this is an unusual day for our demonstration webinar. We are in the process of finishing up a migration to a private server, and that's been happening all night, and we are currently in the process of fixing up the last little, the final little issues. So what we have here is, this is our informational site. This is, I'm sure many of you have seen it, this is how we give out some basic information about EarthCube to any member of the public who's really interested um, and wants to learn more about the initiative as a whole. From this page, we go into the workspace. There we go. And this is the EarthCube workspace. Um, I will I know that many of the people currently on the call are people who we've actually assigned as administrators for their spaces. So I think I might go a little bit into what they can do um, to customize their pages and customize you know, basic sites. The most important thing to know about this website, which we are releasing this morning, um, everyone's been migrated in, 
The most important things are a couple of these links down at the bottom. Um, we are using, we have an extensive list of FAQs to help you in building your individual pages. Um, and then we have two very important links right here. Um, because the site is still new and very large, we would love to have everyone's participation in reporting any website issues that you see. Um, if anything doesn't quite work right, please click this link and let our webmaster know. Or if you have even a question about how to do something, I'd like to build a little section of my space and I'm not quite sure how to do it, just submit a question to us and we'll be glad to help you out. So the way our spaces are set up is we have five major spaces. We have the four NSF-funded project groups. Um, conceptual designs, building blocks, research coordination networks, and test enterprise governance. We also have a very large selection of interest groups. These are all, these are all groups that existed on our last website on earthcube.ning.com, and they're all represented here, and so we've brought everyone into their project site this morning. I'll show you a little bit about what my team's done. I'm part of the Operations Center, um, and because I've favorited that center, there we go, and this will take me directly to my space. There we go. So in our space, we're able to kind of display whatever we like. We have a calendar section to keep track of meetings. We keep track of tasks. We have general news and announcements if we have anything we want to demonstrate to the, you know, the public at large. And we have a discussion board to chat amongst ourselves. Down here we have links to um, documents that we, can, that we can leave on the site and collaborate with and collaborate on. We also have a larger document repository for final documents, which is largely searchable and it's an easy way for people to, to see any documentation from any of the other project teams. We also have a link to our Google Docs folder because we love our Google Docs folder and we use it all the time. Um, here's our list of events. And here's anything that anyone has done recently in these spaces. So if you are an admin of a space, you have a basic setup that you've been provided with. And in this setup, you are able to customize it any way you like. We decided to throw in a logo and some pictures, and we did it by hitting the Customize button at the top of the screen. And so in this view, you're able to sort and move content around any way you like. And what we have here is what we need so far. The nice thing about this software is that we will be able to change our space any way we like as our needs change. So at this point, this is pretty much all we need right now. Um, here's, what, here's what another team's done. Uh, this is one of the research coordination networks, and they have just put a flat informational page, and they've been able to set up sections to display their webinars, the workshops they have scheduled um, to get people onto their listserv. And so they've put this together to fit their specific needs. Um, then we've gone through the customizing. Uh, because the site is released today, I think many of you already have a login. If you do not, please just go to workspace.earthcube.org. Workspace .org. And you will get to a login page. There we go. Sorry about that. And so if you are a member of the Ning site, what you need to do is go to this workspace.earthcube.org and click request a new password because you are already in the site. And then all you have to do is give the email address you used on the Ning site and we'll email you a new password. If you have any trouble at all, um, you can just put your name and email address here and we'll help you out that way.
And let me go through one little thing. Here is our, I want to kind of make this parallel to what Karen was talking about. Here is our operations center, and this is our, this is our subspace. We are below the secretariat, which is part of governance, so it trees down to where we're at. Um, this is how we find us. Are these menus running along the top? And so these are our sections. This is where we're keeping all of our content. Pardon me. And this is our task list, which we actually are able to use quite a bit. And this is one of the things where we've used mixed mode privacy. Um, everything else on our site is open to the public. And though we don't necessarily have any nefarious tasks on the list, we decided to just keep that to the team as we run what's happening mostly with the website. Um, and I think at this point, what we can do is open the floor up to a Q&A about Open Atrium. If Mike is still on the line, I believe he is. Yes, and we can move it over to him. Great. So right now, everybody is um, muted. I've muted everybody. So if you have a question, post it in the chat, and then I can either unmute you to have follow-up questions, but I'll be reading the questions that we received in the chat window. And um, we got a couple good questions, but keep them coming because we have plenty of time. Um, and these questions can either be answered by Mike or our webmaster, Pam, who we'll avoid talking to since she is ill but she might have to step in um, on that end. So the first question that we have is, um, if we have EarthCube event photos that we want to post into a general gallery, how do we do that? Well, I, oh, I can, I'm sorry, I can address that. This is Kate. Uh, this is something that actually we're working on right now and over the course of the next few weeks. At this point, we do not have the photo capability up yet because we've released a somewhat bare bones version of the site. But I know this is something that we have the capability to do and is on the road to being built. So thanks for that one. Great. Um, a second person asked um, or requested more like um, saying, we'd like to see a single calendar slash event page that lets me choose any number of groups calendars overlaid similar to um, an Outlook calendar, a Google calendar, where you can choose which group ah. calendar you look at, um, and you can overlay those. So, Mike, this might be a question that you can better answer if we're able to pick and choose which calendar we overlay, or do you just have to view a calendar of a larger, a larger workspace that encompasses several subspaces? Sure, I can address that. Um, yeah, right now it's designed to, to only show a single calendar, um, either within a section like your governance calendar, or if you put a calendar on a, a top level space, it can roll up all of the events from all of your subspaces. Uh, so for example, you can have a, a global calendar for the whole site or, or for some other bigger, uh, like for your uh, RCNs or your governance, uh, that kind of thing. Um, right now, um, there's no kind of out-of-the-box functionality for kind of a, what I'd call a live uh, choosing of groups uh, like David is, is asking about. Um, you can select when you set up this page um, back in that kind of customized page option that you were in, you can click the configure button for that calendar widget and control um, which, which space it shows or which subspaces it shows. Um, I think the ability to add a, a list of checkboxes on the right where you can kind of pick and choose what to what to show is a good idea for some future functionality. Um, it, it can get a little tricky when you have hundreds and hundreds of groups on your site to kind of figure out how you want to kind of configure and control that. But I think that's something we can certainly look at for the future. Uh, for right now, it's relatively easy in the sense of this is just Drupal, and so these are just views within Drupal, so it's very easy to customize these to do pretty much anything you want with them. Great, thank you. Um, I hope that answers David's question. He actually had to jump off the call. Um, 
Another question that we have is, um, well, I'll read this because it's actually a really great comment. Um, it says, it seems that people that are not directly affiliated with EarthCube that will visit just the, the informational site might not get the benefit of being able to see these news and calendar events since they're created on the workspace. Um, and Kate has an answer to that question. Yes, we are currently working on, and we do have a very simple interface for the public page. If anyone goes into either Get Involved or News and Events, we are putting together, we are developing announcement feeds and event feeds for these sites. So anyone that makes one click over should be able to, in the, in the very near future, um, really get a picture of what's happening with the project teams because we're going to have it imported from the workspace site. So it will directly, uh, to answer your question, Kirsten, it will directly populate the earthcube.org informational site yep. when an event or calendar event is created on the workspace. Um, that was something we held off on until we actually started posting events on the workspace. Yeah. But now that it's open to everyone, we feel that it's going to be the right time to start that migration and it will be an automatic feed. Um, one more question that we had was, uh, is there a Creative Commons license uh, option for content that we supply? I, I don't feel that I'm actually able to address that one. I'm not sure if this is, maybe Pam, is, is this a question that you can answer? Um, it wasn't actually anything that I had thought about. Is this in reference to when we get the galleries up for the photos? Mm -hmm. I assume so. Yeah, I, I would have to look into that. It wasn't something even on my radar. I'm sorry. No, no, not a problem. Uh, Bruce, we'll follow up with you um, offline about that if we do get an answer, but I think that's a really great question um, once we start importing photos and, and other things. So there could be white papers, there could be uh, any number of pieces of content that people want to have. Exactly. exactly. Okay, well, I don't see any more questions um, in the chat window, but if anybody would like to unmute themselves and ask a question. Oh, we have one coming in the chat. The question is, will we be able to see metrics on page visits, written richness and usage of team pages, i.e. gauge the potential return on investment at the time that we use to set up these pages. Um, Mike, is that is that something that that can be in, installed as a as a module? Was yeah, are, are metrics available for individual spaces? Uh, yeah, there is an integration with Atrium and Google Analytics and uh, there's a it's a OA analytics module uh, that comes with Atrium that uh, you probably just need to turn on if it's not already on. And okay. it puts in the tokens so that you can, uh, in your Google Analytics, you should be able to see analytics on a per space uh, and per subspace basis. Great. Uh, can we just, uh, this is Siri Joy, I was going to ask a question. Let me follow up. I was typing quickly, so sorry if it was a little bit incoherent. Um, uh, so my, you know, obviously some investment is going to be needed to, to, to jump over to use this as a collaboration tool as versus tools that we, um, you know, are familiar with, right? And so the advantage would be, you know, more interaction with other EarthCube, other EarthCube um, um, teams, but then we want to know, well, are they actually using it? I mean, of course, it's a, or, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a chicken and egg sort of thing, you know, but, but um, it would be good to know to what degree uh, what sort of uptake there is been by kids is there isn't a requirement to do anything more than like minimally put some information about what you're doing, um, you know, switching from that mode to actually using it as a tool and putting up calendars and putting every one of your events and tasks and documents and all this, you know, there's an investment there and, you know, and, and we have to have, have some basis for, for gauging what the, what the return on that investment in time would be. That's very true. Um, it really depends on how your team plans on using it. The spaces are there for you to use if you need them, and we will work with you. I'll follow up with you afterwards about setting up analytics for your page, and then you can really see how far you want to develop the site. That's no problem. Um, just to let you guys know, Google Analytics is turned on. I haven't really been checking the, um, 
the Google Analytics itself going in. But yeah, it's already turned on, and that's something that for I need to check to see the difference between the Google Analytics and the Open Atrium Analytics, and Mike might be able to answer this better um, in terms of the difference between the two and what Open Atrium Analytics adds to the Google Analytics. But the Google Analytics is already on and has been tracking information. Great, Pam. Yeah, what the uh, Atrium Analytics, all it actually does right now is add the, uh, the tokens to the page to let you do per space analytics. Uh, analytics by itself doesn't obviously know about what, a, what an Atrium space is. So that's at this point all it does. Um, what, you know, we have roadmap plans for um, being able to let you put widgets on your space pages that would actually pull the data from, from Google Analytics and show that to you actually on your space. Uh, which would use a Drupal module called GA Stats that, that Phase 2 actually wrote. Uh, so that's on the roadmap for the future. Right now, the OA Analytics just adds those uh, token keys. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Thanks. Great. Um, we do have one more question, um, and I think Mike might be the best person to answer this. The question is, is there an easy way to invite a list of people to join your specific group or your space? Um, right now, we don't have any kind of bulk functionality like that. Uh, Drupal itself, uh, we're, uh, spaces are using a module called Organic Groups. Um, there is some kind of older bulk operation modules for those that I think we need to look at and, and update. Uh, last time I checked, they didn't actually work with the, the kind of latest version of Drupal and the modules for that. Uh, so right now, un unfortunately, you have to add it manually. However, there is integration, um, I, and I don't know that this necessarily applies to EarthCube, but if you have an, ident an identity management system like a LDAP server that's used to manage uh, users and groups, uh, Atrium uh, will interface to that and kind of automatically um, log people in based on those credentials and automatically put them in whatever groups they're in in LDAP. So the, the focus has been more on kind of integrating with that kind of LDAP and Active Directory type system uh, as opposed to kind of manual um, bulk import on the Drupal side itself. Uh, just to follow up on that, we, we don't have an LDAP system set up for this. It, it right now is about 2,000 users, but they're dispersed throughout the country and people can join or, or get out however they want to do, but we don't have an overarching system like as if we were all in one office or part of one, one major corporation. And we do have roadmap plans uh, that the integration with LDAP was actually done in a pretty uh, generic way. Uh, we have another client, for example, that they, they don't have LDAP, but what they have is a, a kind of flat file that they dump from their uh, Google Mail directory every day, uh, and that's what they actually use to control users, and they wanted it set up where as users were added and removed to their, uh, to their Google uh, email that they get added and removed on the Drupal site. Uh, the, the user identity management actually lets us do those kinds of things, so we can uh, you know, integrate with other types of systems, even if it's just like a flat file like that. Um, so again, those are alternatives to actually creating, like you, you don't necessarily want to create all the accounts and people to start with. You, know, you might have 10,000 potential people that would go to the site, but you want to kind of add them as they use the site and not necessarily pre-populate the whole system. Uh, that's kind of what that's designed for. Great, thank you, Mike. And um, Kate is sharing her screen right now, and she kind of went through how you might add an, a user to your group. This is only a functionality that's only available to admins of that space. But if you are in your space and you are an admin, which several of you on this call are, you can click that spaces um, page, and then you click the members button. Yeah, if you're an admin of your site, here's a very here's a basic page that hasn't really. This is the kind of generic layout. So nothing's really happening yet. But if you're the admin of this site, this is everyone who's a member of the site, and you can add anyone you like by just typing their name in there. Type in a name, I see. That's me. That's Anna. And then I can add her to the space. I can also make anyone an admin. If you don't want to take on admin responsibilities yourself and you want to give the power to another, you can give one to anyone who is a member of your group. Great. And we have one last question, um, and it is, is there any way to support 
voting. Mike, do you have an answer to that? Yep. Has... Sure, I can take that one. Um, we don't have anything turned on out of the box for that because there's a couple different ways to do it, but we do support the Drupal 5-star module. And that's the main one that I've done testing with. Um, we, you know, There's another way to, to flag things as kind of like and unlike, more of the Facebook thing. Uh, what we've done more of is kind of the 5-star rating module, so that definitely works uh, with OpenAtrium. Great, thank you. Um, well, thanks everybody. Those were really great questions. Um, I'll open the floor again to anybody who wants to unmute themselves and ask a question or quickly type in the chat. We'll give about 30 seconds. Um, yeah, and I would also like to iterate that please feel free if you are even trying to decide whether how much content you want to bother putting up here or what is available to you or the potential of this site for your group. Um, please feel free to just contact us. There's the submit a question link at the bottom of the screen and that goes to that goes to me and I can, I'll do my best to help you out with any questions you have. And Kate, this is Mike. I, you know, just while we're collecting questions or while anyone's getting a last question, just I'm sure Karen will want to speak also, but just wanted to throw in my, my two cents that I just love what you guys have done here. It's really a great example of exactly the kind of thing OpenHTM was designed to do. Um, so it's it's always fun for me to see, you know, all the stuff we kind of slaved over the last year actually being used uh, by organizations. Uh, I think you you've got the concepts down really well and and really have this set up nicely. So this great thanks thanks for the people that did that. Pass that on to any of the any of the developers that helped you with this. Um, they did a good job. Yeah, thank you. And I think our developer is definitely an open atrium expert at this point at this stage in the game. Um, let me see, are there any additional questions? We don't have any other questions. Um, oh. Oh, maybe that was a false alarm. Okay, uh, Karen, any final thoughts? She may have stepped away. Um, well, thank you all for joining, and we'll have our next webinar uh, next month topic to be determined. Yes, yeah, thank you everyone for calling in and thank you very much for keeping up with our last minute time change as well. I'm glad that everyone was able to make it. Um, barring any final questions, I think we can call it to a close. Great, thank all right. you all. Thanks everyone.